Oh, it was pushing 80 degrees in Rochester today. Not exactly hockey weather outside, but they're getting ready inside. This place buzzing with anticipation. Opening night here at the Gene Policini Center on the campus of the Rochester Institute of Technology as Tiger fans are filing in, ready for the puck to drop on yet another season of RIT Hockey. We welcome you to the Policini as the two-time defending Atlantic Hockey champions. They're on the ice ready to begin their quest for a three-peat this season. It starts here tonight against conference rival Robert Morris. You are watching RIT Sports Zone pregame live presented by Taylor the Builders. Over the next half hour, we'll get you ready for the Tigers and the Colonials as you look high above our new home here just behind section 109. A new season brings a whole new look inside the RIT hockey program as we will be live with you before every men's hockey game here on campus. So come on out, join the broadcast or join us and catch us all season long on Time Warner Cable. Good evening, I'm Kevin Roach. So glad you could join us here tonight for RIT Sports Zone pregame live. I'll be joined by Gene Battaglia and John DiTullio a little bit later in the broadcast. Well, it certainly was a roller coaster season for the Tigers a year ago. Wayne Wilson's bunch was bruised and battered for much of the year, limping its way to a fifth place finish in the conference regular season standings. Remember Nick Amato? Amato joined the Tigers roster off RIT's club hockey team. And even as a third option at the position, he was needed to step in and contribute during a pivotal stretch a year ago. But despite the many hardships this team faced, in the end, when it came playoff time and mattered most, these Tigers defended their title admirably. For the second straight year, RIT ended up on top of Atlantic hockey. Five seconds remaining. Puck in the far corner, three seconds to celebrate RIT. Rochester, New York, and the Tigers are going back to the NCAA tournament. But getting there wasn't easy. Ravaged by injuries for most of the season, these Tigers proved to be one thing. Resilient. I don't think we ever gave up no matter what was going on. We fought from the start to the finish and, you know, we had multiple guys hurt, not just me. And we were always going through something and we never make excuses. We just continue to fight and fight and get the job done. I think teams knew what we were capable of and we got the guys back and everybody was healthy. And, uh, you know, we don't really care what other people think about ourselves. Uh, we knew what we had and we knew we were ready to go. And I don't think there's a guy in our locker room who thought that we weren't going to win the conference championship again. Shot in the goal and we are tied. Liam Karens, the lefty boom, one to one. I thought the guys stuck with the process all year and uh, I think it was a long year though. It was a grind, definitely a grind. But uh, at the end of the day, we came out on top and I think it's because everyone just stuck with it to the thick and the thin. 18 return from that title team, including five of RIT's top six scorers. And waiting for them here on opening night, a rematch from March. Robert Morrison are a great team, you know, and like I said, there's great teams all over the conference. And um, to be able to start off with them, I actually kind of like it. You know, you're starting off with a great, great opponent and you're starting off strong. So it's going to be a good test and uh, we're excited just to get going. My three years here, we've never really had any good starts, but to get into league play right away against a good Robert Morris team, Regardless of how many guys they had graduating, they're always going to be a good team. There's always a turnover, but you can never take any team lightly. They're going to come in here and they're going to want revenge. It's going to set the tone for the league and set the tone for the beginning of the year for both teams. I mean, we can't take them lightly and we got to we got to push for a weekend sweep. Last month, the Tigers received their Atlantic Hockey Championship rings, the reward for a job well done, but also a reminder of what it takes to be a champion. I think it's more of a motivator for, hey, we can make some history this year, but not just that, like we can win a championship and hopefully move on further than we have in the past few years, because as good as it was to make it to the tournament, we want to win, obviously, the regional and get to the Frozen Four. That's the ultimate goal after winning a league championship. Past accomplishments are awesome and something you remember for a lifetime, and you have those memories, but when it's a new day, it's a new day, and last year is done, and we're 0-0 zero zero right now and getting ready for this season. Oh, the Tigers hoping to become just the second team to three-peat in Atlantic hockey history. They would join Air Force, who did it back in 07, 08, and 09. And the Atlantic hockey coaches seem to believe the Tigers can pull it off. RIT receiving eight first-place votes and were picked to finish atop the conference in the preseason coaches poll. Also receiving votes Air Force, Holy Cross, Tonight's opponent, Robert Morris, picked to finish six. Now joining us, the head coach of the Tigers, now in his 18th season. Can you believe it? Uh, it's gone by quickly, but it's, uh, I've enjoyed every moment of it. Does anything get better than opening night? 
No, it's exciting, you know. Uh, it's a little nerve-wracking for coaches because there's so many unknowns, uh, regardless of how many guys are coming back. Uh, you just don't know what to expect, but once you get that game underneath you, so last weekend was good for us. We could watch video, start addressing some things, and then our games are just going to get tougher and tougher. Robert Morris, UConn, uh, yeah. Union, so on. So we're going to try and keep getting better every week as a, a coach's cliche, but it's so true, and uh, looking forward to seeing us do better than we did last weekend. Robert Morris, head coach Derek Schooley, we talked to him this morning. He was talking you guys up. Do you put any stock into that preseason poll? Well, it's, it's a starting point, I yep. guess, and you can either go up or go down, and <laughs> we've done everything in between, so uh, it, it's going to be ever-changing every week. Uh, you're going to have good weeks, bad weeks, and uh, but uh, just getting the league uh, points in the standings go up this weekend, and uh, we're looking forward to trying to get some points. You look at what this team went through a year ago, so much adversity. What did that group learn from that experience, and how can the returners you know, experience that this year and take from that? Well, I'd say never give up. Yeah. Believe in yourselves. Uh, no one's going to feel sorry for you. You just got to keep plugging along, and I thought we did a great job. Our leadership uh, last year, our seniors, our captains, uh, that's what we're looking for tonight. So even if things are going well, it, you know, you never know what could happen at the end. I'm sure Robert Morris is very upset with how things finish after a spectacular year on their part, but uh, it can change on a dime. So, you know, you just want to keep getting better and uh, just believe in what you're doing. And we'll see a lot of different people in hopefully this weekend in our lineup and uh, keep evaluating and, and trying to get better. One guy we'll keep an eye on is uh, Miles Powell. He had a tremendous surge from freshman year to sophomore year a year ago. Do you see him having the kind of year that Garbowski maybe a few years ago had where he really exploded offensively? Well, we're certainly hope, uh, hoping for that. Uh, I think he improved quite a bit from his freshman to sophomore year. He got better during his sophomore year where his best was his last game. Yeah. And he started off with a, a couple of points here uh, last weekend. So we hope uh, we need him to do, to do well. We need Gabe's line to do well. Uh, I think Skirving, uh, Smith, and Cameron have, are, are really strong. So I think we've got some depth, and uh, we're going to need everyone at certain parts of the season. Power play, some games, penalty killing another. Everyone's got to contribute if we're going to be successful. Five of your six top scorers returning from a year ago. That's a good thing to have. Also a great thing to have in net is Mike Rotolo healthy back in there. How much of a factor will he be this year for you? Well, I think he's always a factor in a lot of different ways, and it's not always just how he performs, but how he motivates, how he uh He's a real good leader for us. Uh, he's not wearing a letter. Unusual, I guess, for goalies to do that, but uh, we consider him a leader in the locker room, and as a senior, we're, we're counting on him, and we think Shorty's going to be able to get some uh, time. And, and I'll also say Gavin, uh, yeah. our, our third goalie, uh, we've upgraded in that area too. So uh, we're looking forward to seeing what they can do, but they got to prove it every night, yeah. and that's, the, that's the, the beauty about sports is that uh, every night there's going to be a different test, different obstacles, and... How you overcome them and trying to find a way to win games is, is important, and there's a lot of different ways to do that. And quickly, so much change for Robert Morris, losing nine scorers from the year ago, nine starters. What do you expect to see from them tonight? Well, as I, I've told a lot of people, you know, they, they uh, lose experience, but they're not as young as what people think. Uh, I looked at their lineup tonight. They have as many seniors as we do in the lineup, <laughs> and they have as many freshmen as we do. So. Uh, you know, they've got some people that have been in the program, might not have got the amount of ice time they'd like, yeah. uh, but they're not freshmen either. So there may be juniors that uh, have a lot of experience and, and are out to prove themselves. So this isn't a team that, uh, even though they would ever lose nine or whatever, it's not like they've got nine freshmen in their lineup. They, they're still a pretty veteran group, and I think that's important for them as well. So we've got our hands full. We're looking forward to the challenge. Well, best of luck to you, Coach Wilson, tonight and all season long. We'll be checking back with you here on Pregame Live. We appreciate your time. Best of luck tonight. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. All right, it. head coach of the Tigers, Wayne Wilson, still ahead here tonight on Pregame Live. We welcome back a former Tiger who has returned to campus to assist the women's hockey program. But next, we'll have the latest on those Robert Morris Colonials. You're watching RIT Sports Zone Pregame Live. Nothing better than a championship game as the RIT Tigers take on the top seed, the Colonials, from Robert Morris. Goes in, shoots, scores! He in front, shot in a goal! Shot in a goal, and here, shot in front, scores! Scores at Valenzuela! It's party time, the Tigers are going back to the NCAA tournament. Third title school history, back to back, second of trip now.
Oh, the championship banner in the Policini updated this summer. The Tigers have now won three Atlantic Hockey Championships during their 10 years in the league. 2010, of course, they went on to that Frozen Four in Detroit. 2015, they became the first 16 seed to beat a number one. And, of course, last season when they went on to lose in the regional semifinals, the top-seeded Quinnipiac. We're looking for more this season from the Tigers. Welcome back to RIT Sports Zone pregame live. Tigers opening the season here at home tonight against Robert Morris. Well, if you followed college hockey over the last few years, specifically the Atlantic Hockey Conference, you know the Colonials have been a powerhouse. Robert Morris won the 2014 Conference Championship and finished atop the regular season standings in each of the last two seasons. But make no mistake, the team you watch here tonight is not the same team we saw back in the AHC Championship game last March. The Colonials were on the ice earlier this morning at the Policini Center getting ready for their weekend series here with those Tigers. Every year it is the nature of college sports. Every year teams lose key players to graduation, but the Robert Morris Colonials, their roster may be one of the hardest hit in the nation. This offseason the Colonials graduated nine seniors, including more than 65% of the team scoring. Head coach Derek Schooley realizes it may take time for this year's group to find its way. You're not going to replace two 50-point guys with freshmen. You're not going to replace uh, uh, the, the physicality that we had with some other guys with freshmen. You have to do it by committee. And uh, we're going to be a different team. Uh, I think we'll have success, but we'll have success in different ways. And uh, what, how that is is yet to be seen. And we've got to bottle that magic uh, together, find out a little bit about our group, and find out what we, could, what we have and what we don't have. And what a way to start by coming in here and, and playing the, the the odds on favorite, the pick to win the league, the, the best team, the playoff champions. We can, I'll, I'll pump them up all that they can be pumped up. Well, I mean, obviously the players that left, they, their, their stats, their legacy speaks for themselves. And I mean, it was an honor to play with those nine guys. But at the same time, we're moving forward. We're not looking back, like I said. Uh, they're obviously a big loss, but we brought in 10 freshmen that are more than capable of stepping in and, and doing a good job. And obviously they might not put up Zach Lynch numbers their freshman year, but we think by committee we have enough scoring and enough defense, enough goaltending that we can be right where we were last year. While Coach Schooley and company wonder where the goals might come from this season, one area they're not concerned about is in the net, where senior Dalton Isaac is set to take over for Penfield native Terry Schaefer, who was one of those graduating seniors last May. Isaac went 5-1-1 one, and one last year before he was sidelined because of hip surgery. He was out on the ice today. One of those wins last season, including a shutout victory over a top five Michigan team. Schooley says Isaac, when healthy, is the type of guy that can steal a game for you. He was really good. He has really good feet and can get himself in position to make those second and third saves. Schooley wants to see how he plays here tonight following that hip surgery to see if he's okay to go in tomorrow night's game. Well, still ahead on the program, Gene Battaglia and John DiTulio will join us with their thoughts on tonight's matchup. But the RIT women's hockey team took the ice for the first time in front of the home fans today. Highlights are ahead. You're watching RIT Sports Zone pregame live. And welcome back to RIT Sports Zone pregame live from the Gene Policini Center at RIT. There's still time to get down to the game tonight. Face off coming up between the Colonials and Tigers at 7.05. Well, the RIT women's hockey program endured a difficult season a year ago that saw the Tigers win only eight games, a far cry from what this proud program is used to. But it's a new season, and head coach Scott McDonald's team is hoping to turn things around. They were on home ice this afternoon. Tigers hosting Providence College at the Policini. Entering the day, the Tigers 0-2 on this young season. The Friars jumped on the Tigers early in the first. Brooks Stoddard makes the initial stop, but Cassidy McPherson is there to put home the rebound. Providence led 1-0. Under four minutes to play in the opening period, Friars would strike again. Blair Parent to Madison Sansone. Up and over Stoddard for the goal. The Friars took a 2-0 lead after one period of play, and we'll take another look at that puck. Watch it go up and over. Stoddard off the crossbar and in. A tough one to give up there. Tigers were in an early hole, and it would get worse in the second period. McPherson comes calling again. Her second on the day, third on the season. Tigers lose 7-0. Afterwards, we caught up with head coach Scott McDonald. Because um, I actually thought we started off not bad, and it was um, then they got that the big rebound goal, that first one, that really sunk our bench for whatever reason. 
And uh, that was kind of the message at the end of the game where one or two goals doesn't mean the game's over, especially in the first period. And uh, we got to find a way to figure out those games where just get one, chip away at the chip away at the lead, and it is a long game. It's a long game and a long season, and the um, to come into a third period and then just kind of fold um, that was that was a big disappointment. And just a reminder, the Tigers and Friars back here on the ice tomorrow afternoon at the Policini Center faceoff set. For 205. Now that is not a television broadcast of that contest. So the best way to catch the Tigers all season long, right here in this building. You can purchase single game tickets to both RIT men's and women's hockey all season long. Visiting RITHockey.com will get you there or stop by the box office Monday through Friday from 10 to 6. And on game days beginning at 10. You can also get those season tickets still until the end of the Robert Morris game tomorrow. So if you want season tickets, you better hurry and get them by tomorrow night. Well, four years ago, former goaltender Jared DeMichael returned to campus and played an integral role in helping guide the RIT women's hockey team to a Division III national championship. This year, another former Tiger has returned to join head coach Scott McDonald's staff. SportsZone's Lauren Peace has the story. a successful year as a student athlete at RIT, you went on to play professional hockey both in the U.S. and Europe. What were the ups and downs of playing professional hockey, not for the money, but for the love of the game? You want to try to progress and move up as fast as possible, and, and sometimes you kind of get, get stuck there. And I realized that after my second year, I was playing with guys that were 40 years old, and they had kids, and were kind of bouncing around all over the place, and I just didn't want to have myself end up in that position and end up playing for five, six, seven, ten years. How did the opportunity with RIT Women's Hockey come about um, and what's your role on the coaching staff right now? I knew I was done playing. I was still looking for a coaching job and um, the job opened up here so it was, it was perfect timing for that for sure. And being able to come back to RIT, it's, it's a lot better knowing, knowing what RIT is about, knowing what RIT has to offer. <laughs> Right now, I'm, I'm working with the whole team, but uh, like my specialty obviously is with the goalies, so whenever there's opportunities to, to do that sort of stuff, I'm working with the goalies. So you're here, is there, right? You're gonna lead with your hands, squared up to that puck, and then push. Have you found that there are differences now working with the women between the women's side of the game and the men's side? As far as the style of hockey, it's different just because it's not as physical. Um, but there is physicality, there is body checking. It's not considered like a check, but it's still, there's still contact. But as far as X's and O's and systems and stuff like that, it's, it's all the same stuff. <laughs> Guys, you're coming to college hockey, you're expected to know everything right away and be able to say we want to do a certain system or a certain play or be in a certain position, guys should know immediately. Um, whereas women, you want to be able to be able to teach a little bit more. For me, transitioning into that part of it has taken a little bit longer um, just because I have to realize, okay, now I have to teach this instead of just saying, okay, you need to go do this and go do it. So post, out, high glove, back to the post, out, high blocker, and then off angle, Middle, low block, off angle, middle, low blocker. Okay. Just like playing, it's it's a process. Um, you know, you want to be able to to develop as a coach, develop your own style, and and that's what's great about being here is that I have the opportunity now to be an assistant coach, develop my own coaching style, and learn as much as possible from Scott and Matt, um, the other assistant on on staff here. So it's great it's great being able to do that right now, and then. You never know what, what can happen later down the road. Now, oh, Shane Metalor had so much success while he was here playing for the men's team. It's certain he'll help the women's team get things turned around along with head coach Scott McDonald. We'll see how they do the rest of the way. Well, there's still more ahead here tonight on the program. Up next, we head upstairs to check in with the guys who will be calling tonight's game. That is next. You're watching RIT Sports Zone pregame live. And we are back here on RIT Sports Zone pregame live from the Gene Policini Center. 
where we're now less than 10 minutes away from faceoff between the Tigers and the Colonials. Two guys who are as anxious as anyone in the building to get the new season started. Gene Battaglia, John DiTullio join us now for what will be the start of their ninth season of calling Tiger hockey. Good evening, gentlemen. Hi, Kevin, and a happy new year to you <laughs> as we begin another Tiger season here tonight. And John DiTullio, there's nothing more exciting than opening night. Opening night in this building, and let's face it, Going up against Robert Morris makes this game a little extra special. It's an in-conference game, it's a rivalry game, and let's, last March, they went toe-to-toe -to -toe for a championship. Can't wait for them to drop the puck. Now for Robert Morris, they lost 65% of their scoring, John. So how difficult was it for Wayne and his team to prepare for this game, or does he even not really care about it all that Talking much? to him this week, he goes, listen, it's more about us and less about them. He can, doesn't really care that they've got to replenish players like Zach Lynch and some of those high profile players that they had a year ago. He's anxious to see his team perform. Heavy expectations. Can they remain focused? Will they come out each and every, not night, but each and every period and give it their all? We'll find out tonight. Well, they're gonna go with Mike Rotolo in goal tonight, the senior. Here he is. John, this is his time. It's his time to shine. And looking at him tonight, he looks a little thinner. Mike, always oh, a big kid. Looks like he's in. He's coming healthy. He's coming, I think, in really great shape. He's the fiery leader. Listening to Wayne talk with Kevin during the pregame, he's the emotional leader. How far the Tigers will go may depend on how number thirty plays this year. Well, the keys for tonight for our, for the RIT Tigers really is just do your own thing. Yeah. Play a clean game. Take care of the puck. Right. Get the puck out cleanly out of your end and advance the puck. Win the body battle. The forecheck will be a key tonight. And let's face it. They've got to get the pucks on the net. The Tigers love to play fast. Wayne said this week, we've got to get as many nets or many pucks as we can to the net, and let's cash in. Sounds crazy. Opening night, and yeah. we're already looking ahead to how this may impact the standings come March. Absolutely. I love it that the fact that they're opening up with a conference game. Like college football, college hockey. Every game counts here, Kevin. We cannot wait for the puck drop here tonight. Guys, if you're looking at one guy for the Tigers, maybe who's primed to have a big season, who, who's that guy? I'd say Miles Powell, yeah. the team captain. Came, you can't say really out of nowhere, but he stepped up in a time of need, named the co-captain, and for the junior this year, he's gonna be the guy that's yep. gonna be looked to on the power play. Kid who got better and better last year, Gabe Valenzuela. He's an incredible playmaker, anchored that freshman line a year ago. Let's see how he makes that, that, trend, that progression from freshman year to sophomore year. Watch for number six, a dynamic player. All right, guys, we'll check back with you in just a few minutes as we are almost ready for the Tigers and Colonials. Just a reminder, we'll be back with you tomorrow night, 6.30, with RIT Sports Zone pregame live presented by Taylor the Builders. You can catch the show on Time Warner Cable Sports Channel 26, followed by game two between RIT and Robert Morris at 7.05. Also tomorrow on the pregame, we'll catch up with former Tiger 2008 grad Ricky Walton, who in the past 22 months has quit his job started a new company, and is now nearing a major profit milestone. We'll share how it all came together for Walton, thanks to that drawing right there, and a dream. That all comes up tomorrow night at 6.30 on Time Warner Cable Sports Channel for RIT Sports Zone pre-game live. You think you're the ultimate RIT Tigers fan? Oh, do we have something for you. You better get your hands on these. Thanks to our friends at MyCustomSportsChairs.com. We will tell you how you can enter to win a pair of these custom RIT Tiger chairs made exclusively for Sports Zone. All the details on pregame live tomorrow. The Policini Center is jumping. The Tigers and Colonials have taken the ice. Rocky Parada back on the mic, and they are ready to roll with introductions. Tonight, they're handing out these little gems. 2016 Atlantic Hockey Championship towels. The fans on hand will be waving those here tonight as they celebrate the Tigers back on the ice. Students also getting in free tonight, and they are certainly going to make their presence felt as the Tigers take on the Colonial. Robert Morris, coach, one quick note, told me earlier, RMU needs to avoid penalties. They've got to be disciplined, and they got to make it happen here tonight. They know they're going to be tested. They're a young team. They're going to have to make it happen against the Tigers. Well, that'll do it here on SportsZone pregame live. Thank you so much for joining us. Gene Battaglia, John DiTullio up next. Enjoy the game, everyone. RIT SportsZone Live begins now. <laughs>